We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, hello and welcome to a moderately special Christmas edition of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. To make our team suitably Christmassy, they've been artistically arranged on top of the fireplace. Alas, Barry Cryer is unwell and unable to be with us tonight. I'm sure we'd all like to convey our condolences to John Junkin, who comes in in his place. <laughs> so on my left, uh, with a plasticine base and a sprig of holly, we have John Junkin and Graham Garden. And on my right, covered in crepe paper and made out of pipe cleaners, we have Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> and let me tell you now that at the end of the programme, or towards the end of the programme, we'll be playing that popular family game, Mornington Crescent. And in this special Christmas edition, we've been very lucky to have prevailed upon one of the most distinguished and popular knights of the theatre to take part in a bumper pro-celebrity version of the game. He'll be introduced to our audience here later and to you at home after the game. Now, first of all, to round one, which is uh, wittily called Pop the Balloon. Each panellist has an uninflated balloon in front of him, and when I sound my buzzer, I want them to start blowing them up. <laughs> the winner is the first person to burst the balloon, and I'm told that the delight of this game, for those of you listening at home, comes from the agonised expressions on the faces of the panellists just before the balloon bursts. <laughs> so are you ready? Deep breath, teams, and start blowing now. Are you ready for this? <laughs> That's what happens to you if you unscrew your navel, did you know that? <laughs> and the, the winner of that one, believe it or not, was... <laughs> the winner of that one was Graham Garden. Thank you. So that team... And uh, nobody came second because they all released their balloons and they're flying still around the room. Now, uh, at the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask the teams to give their uh, suggestions for late arrivals at the Christmas ball. So teams, at the very end of the uh, programme, you'll be asked to do the late arrivals for the Christmas ball. Christmas? Yes. I don't see the connection. Oh. <laughs> Nothing is not topical. Now then, we go on to the round called Sound Charades. One team has to make noises and the other team must guess what they mean and the audience are let into the secret and can help by applauding when they're getting warmer and doing the other thing when they're not. We have uh, our electronic computer here to let the <laughs> audience know. And a mystery voice will tell those of you at home what the answer to the charade is. Those of you who'd like to join in the guessing with uh, the teams and don't want to hear the mystery voice, we suggest that you listen instead to the sound of chalk on blackboard. <laughs> Tim and Willie, you're going to do the first uh, charade, which is going up on the board right now, and here's the mystery voice to tell you what it is. The Black Hole. Right, Tim and Willie, is it a film, a book, or what? I don't know, we didn't hear the mystery voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, the hand, <laughs> we will do um, a film. Film. Yes. And it's got um, one, two, three, three words. In the main. In the main, and we'll do them all together. Is it called in the main? No. 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 Do, are they out now? Or, or, do, or do they have two lives? No. Uh, we're, going, we're going to start. We're going to do all together. Oh, all three yes. words together. It's all right between consenting adults. <laughs> Is there anything down there, Willie? I, I, you can't see them unless they smile. No. Um, no. Perhaps <laughs> uh, you say something cheerful. Ah. Hey, big spender. Oh, oh, oh it's it's Shirley Bassey. Shirley Bassey, yes. 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 yes, she's down now. Sydney Poitier. Oh, he found that funny. I'll be honest, he's quite amused. Yes, yes. Right, we've finished now, thank we you. We've finished. We've finished. Good. Next round. <laughs> I think it was the battleship Potemkin, very badly done. You're right, it was very badly done. <laughs> Did we get a point for that? No, the audience didn't applaud. <laughs> down there. Is this in any sense racial? Yes, it is extremely... <laughs> it's 
Not only racial, it is actually tasteless. <laughs> well, we would have expected that. We didn't ask. <laughs> ah, that's a clue. Tasteless. Walt Disney. The Black <laughs> Hole. <laughs> Very good, Graham. You get for your team the maximum of six marks. And we well, go on to your charade. It's going up on the board now, and here's the mystery voice to tell you what it is. Ali Baba. <clears throat> Graham and John, will you tell the uh, opposition whether it's a film, a book, or what? Yeah, no, because um, as with both of our charades this time, this is a Christmas entertainment. How many words? Two words. Good Lord, it's quiet out tonight. Not many people about. Oh, I suppose it's the time of year, really. I, I don't really know what to do. I, I suppose I could... Uh, I could while away a happy hour having a haircut. <laughs> no, no, this place looks closed. Looks closed. Uh, excuse me, uh, are you shut or, or could I have a haircut or a packet of... Uh, uh, <laughs> razor blades? I shave like a butterfly, cut like a bee. <laughs> The shop looks shut, but it's open, says me. <laughs> Quiet out. Cassius Clay or uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Haircut now. Hair. That's your barber. It's your barber. <laughs> Muhammad Baba. <laughs> Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves. Thieves. <laughs> thieves. <laughs> Tim and Willie, aided by approximately ten minutes of applause from the audience, <laughs> you only get three marks there, and we go over to a charade of yours once again now, and uh, this is now going up on our board, and here it is for you listening at home. Apocalypse Now. It's the noisiest writer I've ever heard. <laughs> right, Tim and Willie, will you tell the opposition whether it's a film, a book, or what? Willie will. It's a film. And how many words? That's a clue. Uh, <laughs> two words. Two words. And you're doing them separately or all together? We're going... We're, we're going... All together, <laughs> entirely, at once. Right. Oh, Carlo, what do I do next? Eh, uh, Sophie, uh, I want you to a pocket the lips uh, when I shout... <laughs> Shout at the action. <laughs> That's law that and it? order. Close. A pocket of lips. <laughs> oh, yes, it's ap Apocalypse Now. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. They're slow. They are very stupid. And, uh, aren't they? The a audience. maximum eight points to Graham and John there. <laughs> yeah. that one. Right. And we go over to their final charade, which, uh, let me remind you, is uh, of a topical flavour. It's going up on the board now, and here it is for you listening at home. We three kings of Orient are. Great radio, this. Yeah. <laughs> right, we all know what it is now, except for uh, except for the teams. Graham, well, I hope I hope that uh, Graham and John know what it is. How many words? One. <laughs> no, that's a slight exaggeration. It's six words, and it's uh, a festive offering. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't that fellow over there? Uh, I was supposed to be Scottish in this one. <laughs> oh, yes. um, oh, I'm sorry, John. Were you? I'm sorry. I, I, of course. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I, um, I'm from London. <laughs> and I'm trying to make myself understood by the natives up here. Aye. Uh, which is why I've acquired hey, this... Wait a minute. What? Look over there. Do you recognise that wee chap? I do, I do. That's no. we, uh, Jimmy Ng. Jimmy? You're right, it's Jimmy Ng. I thought it was Frank. Cause no, there, there's his brother Frank just behind him. That's Frank Ng. Aye, the two that's Ng's. <laughs> that's right, Jimmy and Frank. Aye. Well known, those two. Aye, they're, they're off. off he wee, they're off he wee. Oh, the 
I mean, he... mind you, they are hunchback dwarves. I'd so call them dwarves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunchback no, dwarves. To, to put too fine a point on it, uh, I'd call them dwarves. Aye, who, who, who are they playing for now? They, they signed to play for some team in East London, I think. Oh, Leighton. Leighton. <laughs> Somewhere out that way. Oh, it yes. used to be called Leighton. <laughs> Is that it? And That's we've it. ground to a halt. Oh, goodness no, for yes. that. We uh, three kings of Orient are. <laughs> Well, then, no, no, actually, it was the first Noel. I was, to get, I was trying to get six words out of Brigadoon. <laughs> and so you shall. You were a brave really effort from that, Tim and Willie, but on time faults, they lag uh, rather far behind. <laughs> it was, in fact, we freak ings of Orient. Yes, we knew that. We gathered that. Let's go on to the next uh, game. <laughs> this one's called Mist. Hits of the 70s. Miss who? Analysts are invited to give us some of the lesser-known versions of some of the famous plays, films and television series of the decade. And we're going to start now with Graham Garden, and we'll go once round, and then I think we'll open it up for a general free-for-all. So, Graham, will you offer us your suggestion? Well, in the 70s, in the, in the theatre, Tom Stoppard reigned supreme. His only flop was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Unusual one here. Um, whatever you think of his singing voice, Max Bygraves I'm talking about, um, <laughs> we've got to be, be honest about this. He does sell a lot of records. At least he tells us so. Um, and there was a record called Max Bygraves Sings, but it had to be withdrawn under the trade's description. <laughs> <laughs> there was an enormously successful film starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway called Chinatown, and somebody over here thought they would emulate it. So they made an English version of Chinatown called Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pottery joke. <laughs> Not yes. to be sniffed at. Really? Uh, this is an American political drama starring Michael Caine, and it's called Get Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> they may yet make it. <laughs> One that got nowhere was Alien in Wonderland. Um, <laughs> when the white rabbit burst out of her chest. <laughs> I felt sorry for the producer who got so close with Fanny Hall and Annie Hill. <laughs> the James Bond film Muck Spreader didn't do too well. <laughs> nor, nor, nor indeed did the African Queen meets the boyfriend. Actually, I've heard they did very well. well yeah. no, no children. <laughs> that great song, unfortunately, didn't quite make it. Bridge over troubled dentures. <laughs> Tatty version of Grease which was called the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> Any advance on that? One doing very bad business this Christmas is Star Trek The Colour Slide. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Singy Rice and what Lloyd Webber, continuing biblical vein, did very badly with a sequel to Jesus Christ Superstar called Doubting Thomas the Quite Well-Known Disciple. <laughs> Any more? One flew what? over the breakfast table. <laughs> <laughs> sort of marital. Right. Well, at this stage in the game, it's level pegging. <laughs> <laughs> and to the next uh, game, which is, you know, previously in this programme, we played Kim's Game, and this is a special Christmas version of Kim's Game. A number of items suitable for Christmas presents will be passed on a conveyor belt in front of one member of each team. <laughs> And he has to remember as many of them as possible with the help of his partner. The conveyor belt goes for 10 seconds, and there are 30 seconds for recollection. And the recollector can take everything home that he remembers. The now, the recollector of St. Andrews, I we'll start, think you're referring to. <laughs> we'll start here with uh, John Junkin. John yeah. has to recall it, but uh, you can prompt him, Graham, and give him some assistance. Or hindrance, if you like. The belt's going to start now. <laughs> Christmas Kim's game. Cuddly toy. Uh, is that a one? Uh, right, the bell stopped. Um, the bell stopped, rather. And, uh, you have 30 seconds uh, to recall what's on the belt now, starting now. John. Uh, there was a cuddly toy. Uh, another cuddly toy. <laughs> Cuddly toy. There was a big cuddly toy. Cuddly toy. There was a. Thank you. Cuddly toy. Don't help him. Um, there, 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 was, there was a sort of elephant shaped uh, cuddly toy. There were two cuddly toys. Two cuddly toys together uh, and, a, and a cuddly toy. 
A rupture of pliance and a cuddly toy. Uh, a canteen of cuddly toys. Canteen of cuddly toys. <laughs> an electric cuddly toy. A silicone chip cuddly toy. Um, a matched set of cuddly toys. Five seconds to a go. Microwave go cuddly toy. No, a microwave cuddly toy. A microwave cuddly yeah. toy. Yes. And, and, yeah. and, what was that last one? Um, a crate of uh, six cuddly, cuddly toys. toys. And what a bumper Christmas you're going to have now. Uh, Tim, you can do the uh, recollecting now, and Willie, you can give him such assistance as you can, as the conveyor belt rolls in front of your team, starting now. Cuddly toy. Um, Not yet. No, there isn't. Oh, no. That's silly. <laughs> What's that, Willie? That's ridiculous. That's one of your old ones, Willie. <laughs> I think it's one of right, the bell stops. Now, in 30 seconds, Tim, will you recollect what passed before you on that belt, please? There's a cuddly Ayatollah. <laughs> a 14 volume edition of Who's Who in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. <laughs> oh, there goes. Oh, Isla Sinclair. I saw her. Uh... It was only Isla Sinclair that I met her. <laughs> was it? Really? Oh, sorry, <laughs> An evening with Anna Ford. <laughs> uh, some mince pies. Um, the Herod's Elfin Grot with Jeremy Thorpe as Santa. <laughs> a building I didn't recognise. A pair of gloves, or are those car warmers? I'm not. <laughs> it's difficult to see from here. Um, a conveyor belt. A conveyor belt. <laughs> a Christmas conveyor You've got belt. Five seconds. Yes. Uh, oh, a, a book of one note carols for tone deaf people. And an inebriated stagehand who fell on. <laughs> Yes, but you've got a fee for it, I'm happy yeah, to say. Got, yeah. And your 30 seconds are up. <laughs> Didn't they do dreadfully? <laughs> We're going to put in now... Uh, oh, you, you all of you, especially those of you listening at home, will want to know what the score is. We're going to go on now to the... Uh, <laughs> to the blues in which uh, one team sings uh, a blues on a subject prompted by the other team. Uh, Graham and John, you're going to sing the first blues, and Tim and Willie, you're going to give them their subject, please. Well, we're going to go right off the beam of this programme and ask you to sing a Christmas blues. Ah! <laughs> Colin Sell will uh -huh. give the introduction on the piano, so are you ready? Start now. Well, I woke up this morning... <laughs> Hung over right to my hair. Yes, I was. Oh. Went down to the kitchen, saw my old lady there. She said to me, darling, shall I stuff the turkey? <laughs> I said yes and told her where. <laughs> As no And from the audience's applause, you win that round, but we'd better let Tim and Willie have a go. <laughs> so, uh, will you, Graham and John, give uh, Tim and Willie their subject for a blues, please? We'd like to hear them sing the Happy Christmas Reggie Bosengate Blues. <laughs> Remembered I was out of work, so I went back to sleep again. Such a pity. Such a pity. I never got round to calling Mrs. Thatcher at Hill Arbor Hen. <laughs> Still, I've been given a brand new series. It's called Newts at Ten. <laughs> Right, Tim and Willie win that one, and we go on to the game that's called Paranoia. Team A decides that there's something wrong with Team B. Team B have to guess what's wrong with themselves by asking questions, while <laughs> Team A reply in a manner appropriate to Team B's affliction. The aim is to make the members of Team B paranoid and leave the studio twitching. Now then, Graham and John, you're going to start this one. Meanwhile, the uh, affliction will go up on the board here, and those of you listening at home will be told of it by the mystery voice. John thinks he's Michael Parkinson, and Graham thinks he's David Frost. <laughs> right, 
Graham and John, you have the affliction. You have to question uh, Tim and Willie to find out what it is. Will you start your questioning now, please? Well, what's the matter with us? <laughs> well, you've changed a bit uh, since you were over the other side of the big spit. <laughs> um, Graham, yes. yes. Not so much us as you. Gosh, you have changed. Hasn't he? Yes. Is it just Graham who's changed or have I changed as well? You have a bit, the voice has. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it has. It has oh. changed quite a bit. Well, we want somebody else then. Um, don't think so, no. I don't think you were. I mean, I don't know. You're always talking about your roots. You ought to know. <laughs> All about your working class background. <laughs> <don't> you? <laughs> have you two gone remorselessly racial again? No. Well, we have in a way, as far as I'm concerned. Yorkshire is racialist. <laughs> what were we doing the other side of the big spit? You were. I don't know. I was. If you did have a facelift, I'd sue him. So would I. <laughs> well, that alone tells me who I am. <laughs> I think... Doesn't he look like Nixon in this light? <laughs> in who? black and white. It's a who looks like Nixon? Nixon? You. I do. No. I don't. No, no. no, no I don't no, look anything no. like Nixon. No. no. You look like a Burton's dummy. <laughs> Don't knock it, it's a living and it's dry and warm. <laughs> Who said it was wrong? <laughs> um, are we together in this affliction? To some extent. But you have different symptoms. Are we, are we partners in this affliction? No. no. Are we opposed to each other in this particular area? Not really. You area. do the same <clears throat> job. It's just coincidental that we both have this affliction. You do the same job. Pardon? Take your fingers out of your mouth when you're talking, Tim. You see, he's getting aggressive again. I know. Yeah, he's always like that, isn't he? You know, when, he does, when he's out of his depth, he gets aggressive. Do you remember? <laughs> when Muhammad Ali absolutely yeah. wiped the floor with him. He was so aggressive, didn't he? He hates I'm women. A, hates it, yeah. I'm a midget who can't swim. <laughs> yeah. I liked him when the emu got him. <laughs> so I'm Michael Parkinson. Yeah. <laughs> leads me to find out who I am. No, oh, stop um, grovelling. I think so. <laughs> I think you've got to be a lady. Yes. Have I got to be a lady? Am I a lady? Not to no, our knowledge. No. <laughs> am I a Yorkshire person too? No. 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 You're whatever anybody wants you to be. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid. <laughs> I well, am not a Yorkshire person, and I don't think I'm British either, am I? Well, that's debatable. <laughs> Mid-Atlantic, I'd say. So I've got to see. Mid-Atlantic. Mid Ideally Atlantic. in the Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> and Mid I do the same job as my colleague? Uh, yes, uh, basically. Yes. Isn't that fair, audience? Same job? <laughs> I'm not frosty. <laughs> God, you know how to hurt Brilliant isn't the word for it. <laughs> Brilliant's not the word for it. Tortuous is. <laughs> now then, Tim and Willie, you have an affliction which you've got to uh, discover from Graham and John. That's going up on the board now, so I'll be back with you in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, here's the mystery voice to tell you listening at home what it is. They have both given us Christmas presents that we have already got. <laughs> Right. It's oh, up on the board. I don't know what it is. Tim and Willie, will you please start questioning? Uh, does it apply to both of us? Oh, yes. Thank yes. you. Is yes. it in any way, because you have captured the Christmas spirit in some way, is it in any way festive? Yes, and we, yes, do, we appreciated them hugely. Very much indeed. Really nice. <laughs> we We've sent you something in a box. Well, you know you have. Bless you. <laughs> really? We honestly. think we're Father Christmas. Well, you certainly behaved like Father Christmas. <laughs> I, I think, I think it's so well. clever of you to have, to have found them, really. It's, I do, I too. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thought. <clears throat> mm. Wonderful. <laughs> Are we an Avon lady? <laughs> Your private life is no concern of <laughs> You can be an Avon person now, so... Uh, gifts. Is it gifts, generally? Oh, yes, indeed. Gifts. We think we've given you something. Uh, and we thank you, we really. Thank, we I mean, thank you for it. And, it's and a thought I, that counts. I shall use it always. <laughs> I, uh, there's one way I won't use it. Where the... There's a comb. <laughs> yes. Have we given you the wrong present? The present you won't 
don't like. No. Oh, no, we like it. Oh, no, nice. Oh, of course. You're being very polite about something oh, you really? don't like. Oh, really? I mean, they're terrific. I mean... <laughs> We've given My you... wife and I are so delighted to have the matching set because there aren't many people who do. <laughs> We're so grateful. So what, is, what is so to... clever is to anticipate the fact that, that out of all the people who, who might not want a couple, that, that, that we really did. It's wonderful. We, we've given you writers. <laughs> <laughs> are you lying in your answers? No. The audience is... No, it's so it's you're lying your answers, you don't like what we've given you, you are the two most inappropriate people to get this gift. No, no, I mean, I, oh, I can't speak for Graham particularly on this, but I mean, I, I, was, I was enchanted because to be able to sit there at, at home and, and look at one at that, that end of the mantelpiece and one at that end of the mantelpiece, yeah. it's absolutely, it's wonderful. Bookends. <laughs> <laughs> two Beverly <laughs> sisters. <laughs> <laughs> they've established that yeah. you've given them a present which they don't really like but they're being awfully polite why don't it. they like it um, no taste no. <laughs> <laughs> we've given you our collected works oh no no not, not no, I don't know that <laughs> Tim and Willie I don't think you're going I to get really are. we've given you a copy of the I'm sorry I haven't a clue book I'm going to give you three quarters of a mark and uh, John and Graham you'll have to tell them exactly what it is you've, you've given us something we've already got what? You've got the anything. <laughs> You've already got, got the I'm sorry I haven't a clue book. I think that's unfair. We should have been a loud round of applause and three marks, will you? Don't you agree? <laughs> Thank you very much. It would have been a large round of applause if the audience hadn't been fast asleep. <laughs> now, here's a popular round, censored songs. Teams, I'm going to ask each of you to sing a medley of Christmas songs, and during the song it will be your task to censor, by means of a buzzer, any words you consider will outrage public decency or frighten the horses. <laughs> Willie and Tim, you're going to start your selection first, with Colin Sell accompanying you at the piano. The red reindeer had a very shiny, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glowed. All of the other reindeer used to cook for the They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. But you fool, then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to. Rudolph with your so bright, won't you, my tonight? <laughs> the reindeer grim, as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the Red Reindeer, you'll go down. <laughs> two little boys had two little toys. One had a wooden... I think I would ever leave you when there's room on my for two. Hurry on now. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to on a hot horse open sleigh. Right, now, Graham and John, let's have your selection, please. I don't think we can compete no, with the professionalism really. of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your p <laughs> <laughs> All I want for Christmas are me too <laughs> I saw Mummy Santa Claus <laughs> In the meadow we can a snowman <laughs> And pretend that he is <laughs> He'll say, are you? We'll say <laughs> But you can do the job when you're in town <laughs> On the twelfth day of Christmas My true love sent to me Twelve drummers Eleven pipers, ten lords up, nine ladies, eight maids up, seven swans up, six geese up, five balls, four, three French, two, and up in a pair of three.
Right, it would entirely destroy the Christmas spirit if I told you, Tim and Willie, how far you were behind, so I won't <laughs> dwell on the march. I'll simply go on to the game, which is Christmas telegrams. The teams are asked to send telegrams for this season of goodwill. And we're going to start with you, John. I would like, at this seasonal time of year, to send a greetings telegram to the post office saying, Happy Easter 1983. <laughs> This is a general excuse. Sorry, can't be with you. Undergoing intensive plastic surgery since incident under mistletoe with Esther Ranson. <laughs> Graham. Oh, well, I was going to send one to British Leyland saying, Happy New Year, when the clock strikes at midnight, don't come out in sympathy. <laughs> I'd like to send one to Lord Lucan. Um, all right, we give up. You can come out now. <laughs> right, any further telegrams? I'd quite like to send one to the President of Turkey just reading Get Stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send one to Lord Carrington saying, Urgent, Mugabe is spelt backward, spells Ibargom. <laughs> I'd like to send one to the cast of Crossroads saying a happy Noel and a better rehearsed one. <laughs> I'd like to send one, I don't suppose you'd get it, but I'd like to send one to Vincent van Gogh saying, may all your Christmases be what? <laughs> and a happy new ear. <laughs> Here we are. <clears throat> I'd quite like to send one to Ian Smith, who said that his regime in Rhodesia would last a thousand years, saying, doesn't time pass when you're enjoying this? <laughs> <it?" laughs> right. well, on that uh, note, we'll leave that game and go on now to our pro-celebrity Christmas version of that popular game, Mornington Crescent. And as I told you at the beginning of the programme, we are very happy to have a distinguished guest with us to take part in this game. And uh, we shall uh, tell you who he is after the game, but uh, at this point I'd like to introduce him to our studio audience here. Sir, would you please take your seat next to me? Welcome to our show. I understand that you know the basics uh, of the game, but I have to say that on this occasion we are going to play one of the more complicated rules, as this is a special Christmas version. So what we'll do is we'll allow the teams to play around, for, uh, first of all, so that you can get the, the hang of it. The rule that we're going to play, teams, is the one that involves parallel transfer. <laughs> and that means that any team that gets two positions ahead of its opponents can transfer to a corresponding position on a parallel route without losing a turn. I think that's a bit, right. I mean, I don't play this regularly. I'm a f novice at this game. I, I mean, I, I, I play for, for fun and pleasure, but I've never played this particular rule before. You'll find, John, that it is quite simple, you know, if you, if you just keep your concentration going. Okay, you'll find I'll it, try. If, if Let's you remember, well, we'll give it a it's try. It's a parallel. I think yeah, you'll I'll find it's okay. Parallel. I think you'll find it's think, quite easy. As long as you think, parallel, oh, funnily enough. All right, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give it a go. And to, in order that you can plunge into it straight away, we'll start with you, John. This is, this is a gambit that we evolved playing at home an opening gambit, and, and I don't know if it's acceptable here, but I'll try it. Crutched friars. <laughs> I don't I think, think you'd better start that. again, because that actually doesn't work. No, no, no. That's more oh, horizontal. it does. No, of course it works. I mean, I don't think John evolved it. That's a well-known opening. <laughs> well, it may be now, but I'm sure we evolved it at home. It, 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 it's a valid well, that's, opening. That's that's as, he's a, that's as he's especially come along. Yes, come on. It's his first. Willie, you can follow that. It's yes, his, just. His. Yes, it's all right. Euston Road. <laughs> um, Dalem Gardens. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's still not right. No, it isn't. It's, it's John's opening. Agamemnon Street, I suppose, will work. Not very satisfying. Where? Agamemnon. No, Road. Agamemnon Road. Where? West Agamemnon Hampstead. Road? Yeah. It's the West Hampstead. Yeah. Euston is the nearest Road. Yes. yes. No. Road. Um, Parallel. Transfer. Um, Transfer. Yeah, uh, just a minute. Yeah. Oh, um, 
Uh, Bouverie Street. <laughs> Good lad. I'd be a ninny if I didn't say Ladbroke Grove. Uh, uh, Safe as a house. Um, Portland, uh, Portland Square. Ah. St. 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 James's Park. Uh, I've got to be very careful. Not Kensington High Street. High Street, Kensington. Is that parallel? Not Kensington High Street. High Street, yeah. Kensington. That's all right. What? Huh? Pudding Lane. Um, let's play this right. It's Mornington Crescent and two. Um, <laughs> Fetter Lane. Mornington Crescent. Ah! Ah! been lost about my Labrick Grove. Too clever by heart, that one, Graham. Graham. Yes, yes. Now, <coughs> we're going to involve uh, you, sir, our distinguished guest, in this uh, next round, and what we can do, as more than four people can play the game, instead of substituting for a member of the team, you will follow uh, Willie Rushton in this one. All right? Straight round. Okay. <coughs> so we'll start now with Graham Garden. And I start with uh, Trafalgar Square. Shaftesbury Avenue. Monster Road. <laughs> Mornington Crescent. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> Rather unfortunate. We would like to, to go on and ask you a few things about what you're doing currently, Sir Alec, but, uh, <laughs> but we do have to hurry on to the next game. So can we have a... <laughs> right, and we'll go on to the next game now, <laughs> in which, uh, at the beginning of the programme, I asked the teams to introduce their late arrivals for the Christmas ball, and that is exactly what they're going to do. Right, I shall start. Having go no on. fear. Would you welcome a small and select party, Mrs. Gerald Legg, Mr. Michael Foote, and Miss El Toe? <laughs> well, here come some traditional visitors, the family Rao. <laughs> <laughs> here are the in the blind man's hats with their daughter, policewoman Penny, in the blind man's hats. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Pauling Pair of Socks from Aunt Edna again. <laughs> Anna Pauling Pair of Socks from Aunt Edna again. Mr. and Mrs. Blunt and their secret agent sons, who are several mean spies. <laughs> oh, excellent. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, this thing needs batteries, and their son Gordon Bennett, this thing needs batteries. <laughs> Here's one you'll like. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. The Red Nosed Reindeer <laughs> and their son, Frank. <laughs> it's only because you tell them that like it. I know. It's the way I tell them. It's the way I yell them. <clears throat> From the world of television, Mr. and Mrs. Ting's Battle and their rather pathetic Ray Ting's Battle. Oh. Well, it is pathetic, isn't it? The whole, the whole of the rest of the year, nothing. And then one week when you can't actually watch television, 51 films that I want to see. <laughs> That's just a personal grudge I've got. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sorry. Snows and their clerical son, Parson. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a whole crowd of Christmas favourites. And oh. is it, I do believe, led by Emma Dreaming? Oh, and... <laughs> And half a white, in That's that case. Right. And the well-known Christopher Muss, better known as Chris. Oh, good waiting. Lord, Avery Crease. Miss Carr. And Di Wright. Oh, and his welcome, please, his worship, Mayor Daisby. Mayor Daisby. And he is escorting Mary Ann Bright. <laughs> oh, and there's Anne May for your Crease. <laughs> and, of course, in charge of the whole party, Mrs. B. White. Oh, Welcome them all together, and now they're going to burst into song, I do believe. Emma dreaming, half a white, Christmas, <laughs> just like D, Juan Sui, Houston O, 
when the treetops glisten. <laughs> and children. Liz Ann. Two ears lay bell. Cindy Snow. <laughs> Here she is back again. Never dreaming. Arthur White. <laughs> Christmas. With every Chris. Miss Carr. Die right. <laughs> May our days be merry and bright, and may all your crease misses be white. Nevertheless, I ho hope you all have a happy Christmas and it's <laughs> goodbye from all of us. <laughs>John Junkin, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do for Christmas by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. <laughs>